Let's continue with more vocabulary. The next one is a pure substance. A pure substance is a collection of matter in which all the molecules are the same throughout. These molecules can be made of a single element or a single compound throughout. Again, for example, if you have a bar of iron and it's totally pure, then that means that every single individual building block inside that entire bar is an individual iron atom bonded or stuck to adjacent iron atoms throughout, represented by these uh, cute little red spheres in this drawing. But because there's no other non-iron things in it, we consider that a pure substance. Another example is table salt. Now, table salt is a compound because its formula includes two different elements, sodium and chlorine. Now, sodium's elemental abbreviation is Na, which sounds weird because Na doesn't really resemble the English word sodium. The reason is because sodium used to be called natrium a long time ago. Anyway, we've just kind of stuck with it. So there's sodium chloride, table salt. You can see a really zoomed up picture here of what a individual grain or a few grains of table salt look like, which you can see by squinting at the table salt that you eat in your food, I guess. At a molecular level, what we'd see if we zoomed in really, really closely and squinted really, really hard with like super human vision would be something that looks like this. A bunch of spheres of chlorides represented by these green balls and uh, sodiums represented by these purple balls kind of stuck to each other or bonded to each other in a repeating fashion over and over and over three dimensionally in all directions. Now this is just sort of a really zoomed in version of several of these different spheres or individual atoms, but you can imagine that sort of repeating unit going outward again and again and again in all directions three dimensionally until we get enough of them to make what we see on the macro scale with our eyes, right? Okay, so again, if we have a sample of salt, NaCl, that has no impurities, that is nothing in it other than sodium and chlorides throughout, then it is a pure substance. So this is what a pure substance is, a collection of matter which all of the molecules or atoms throughout the entire thing have the exact same formula. And that formula, of course, can represent an element or a compound. Now this, of course, contrasts with our next term called a mixture. A mixture is a collection of matter in which the materials present are made up of two or more pure substances, which can either be elements or compounds all mixed together. Now, most of the stuff we interact with every day are mixtures. Now, as it turns out, there are two different types of mixtures. The first is a homogeneous mixture. This is a mixture that is uniform throughout. Homogeneous mixtures are also called solutions. Now again, if you have two or more substances, either elements or compounds together, but they're mixed completely uniformly throughout the entire mixture, then it's called a homogeneous. So everything's evenly distributed with perfect evenness. Homogeneous mixture. This contrasts, of course, with a heterogeneous mixture, which is a mixture of two or more elements or compounds that is not uniform throughout. Heterogeneous mixtures, incidentally, can be separated much more easily than homogeneous mixtures by physical means. Here's an example, a granite countertop that I borrowed off of Wikimedia. If you look at this, you can see that it has a lot of different sections or splotches of different colored pieces in it. Why do we have different colors? The reason is because the molecules at that location are different. Now, because the different colors are not uniformly spread, completely uniformly throughout, we get the different coloration. You see, even if we had different compounds, but if they were mixed totally, totally uniformly throughout, then it would just be one solid uniform color throughout. But because we have these different islands of different splotches of colors or dots, it tells us that they are not mixed uniformly or evenly distributed throughout the thing. There's kind of like some here and some other clumped here and different kinds clumped there and there and there. But because we have these different islands of different colors kind of sort of sequestered in different locations throughout, that tells us that the different substances that are present here are not spread uniformly or evenly distributed throughout. Therefore, this granite countertop is a heterogeneous mixture. Now remember, most of the stuff that we interact with are mixtures, and they fall into these two subcategories, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Anytime you see a mixture that has complete color throughout, that's completely and totally uniform, that's probably an indicator that all the substances in there are spread out totally uniformly and it's homogeneous. In contrast, if you see the opposite, like this granite countertop, then it is heterogeneous. Got that difference? We end then with this cool classifying matter flowchart. Now for my USU students, I'll give you a problem set that requires you to identify which class or subclass different types of matter belong to. You are welcome to use this flowchart to do so. And I'll of course work out some problems on this that I'll upload here to YouTube later on. Thanks for paying attention everyone. Take care and have a wonderful rest of your day.